Rare Mob Grinding. One of, if not the most profitable money making method in Wingcraft right now. That used to be kept a secret by the elite Wingcraft players, but in this video I will tell you all about it so you can become rich by mainly standing still and doing nothing. In the end I will also tell you some in-depth strategies to earn the most out of it so you can soon afford all mythics. All rare mobs, which are indicated by the purple star in Wingcraft, are unique and have special ingredient drops that often sell for a lot on the market. What you need to do to grind these is leave a Minecraft account still, standing close to where rare mob spawns, wait some time and after that go and kill the mob with special gear. Rare mobs spawn at specific spawn nodes, but most of these spawn nodes change a bit in every update and patch because this changes a randomized seed in the Wingcraft backend. The region where the mob spawns will however stay similar. One of the easiest rare mobs to grind is the Golden Avia Feathers. Because of its simplicity, it's also on the lesser side of profitability, but I will show you it here to explain the basics of rare mob grinding. To grind it, you can simply set AFK in this tree, wait for one of the mobs to spawn on the spawn nodes that is close by, and kill them to collect your reward. This mob differs from all other rare mobs in the way that it always guarantees to drop one Golden Avia Feather, which is not affected by loot bonus or loot bombs. Having as much loot bonus as possible is recommended when grinding all other rare mobs. The higher the loot bonus, the higher the drop chance for the precious tier 3 ingredient drops. Loot quality has also turned into loot bonus for mob ingredients, meaning that loot quality will have the exact same effect as loot bonus. So if you have an item that gives you 29% loot bonus and 20% loot quality, its total effect would be 49% loot bonus. The required loot bonus to guarantee a tier 3 ingredient drop from many rare mobs is 567%. This does however differ a little with some drops such as the incremental mapping modules and profession boosting ingredients. The ideal way to get as much loot bonus as possible is to have a discover, this crafted helmet, some crafted leggings and boots. This recipe is a good basic one. This one is a little cheaper. This recipe gives more loot bonus but has less durability. And lastly, you could use this one if you want some extra walk speed at the cost of health region and a little less effective loot bonus. For your accessories, you can use one of these recipes depending on if you're fine with getting some negative walk speed. And if you want to go cheap, you could for the rings instead go with old keeper's rings to need less crafted. Lastly, you will want to get some loot bonus weapon, preferably this crafted one. Some loot bonus armor tomes that can be obtained from the Canyon Colossus raid are also great for a little bit extra. Keep in mind that the Charm of the Stone, another reward from the Canyon Colossus raid, only works on mobs in its level range. To maximize efficiency and make grinding easiest, you will want to have multiple Minecraft accounts. One on multiple accounts that are stationary to low chunks and one to go around with the loot bonus gear. There are somewhere mobs that work fine with one account but the more the better, because then you can spread your accounts to different worlds and hop between them with your killing account to get tons of rare mob spawns quickly. And that was just the basics of mob grinding. But with that knowledge, let's jump into a bunch of rare mob grinding locations. I will go into detail for a few ones in the beginning and go through a few ones quickly after that. Next, I will show you how you can find where to grind for any rare mob that I might not have covered. And lastly, tell you some strategies and rare mob mechanics that you must know to grind any of them efficiently. Without those tips in the end, you might as well just spend your days running the Nameless Anomaly raid, making 20 LE per hour. <laughs> Poor. One of the simplest rare mobs to grind is the Highwayman, which drops glimmering coins that usually sell for around 1 LE. The mob spawns in this circle in front of this farmhouse, which you should AFK on top of. This mob has a limit of 1 and a spawn rate of around once every 5 minutes. There are also several crazy cat lady spawn nodes around the house, and to recommend killing those as well, because cat food is a valuable mana region ingredient. You can grind this with one account, because you don't have to walk around much. But placing multiple accounts on different worlds on the house and simply cycling through the worlds will greatly increase how much you make. A very similar mob mechanic wise are rooks that drop 4 cores trust. These spawn on a big sky island outside of Amsford with also a limit of 1. I personally stand on this tree when waiting for them to spawn. For this mob, you should do slash class after each kill, as the spawn time is lower than respawn time. I'll cover some important information about spawn time and respawn time later in the video. Sacred Unicorns and Auric Foilage Valuable drops you can get here are Unicorn Horns, Glided Bark, Luxo Cuttings and Luminous Rune. Unicorns and Auric Foilages have quite a large spawn range, but they spawn pretty consistently and quite often. Because of the large spawn range, it is best to have a stationary account to load the same chunks all the time. I recommend placing that account on the tree next to the spawn. Both of these mobs have a spawn rate of 
around 10 minutes each, with a mob limit of 3 each. Because of the spawn rate, the best way to grind this mob is to grind in 30 minute intervals as it allows enough time for the mob limit to be reached. If you however want to maximize your drops, you could, like with all other mobs, go to a world with double loot when the bomb is thrown and kill all that have spawned shortly before it runs out. Also, fun fact, this is one of Mini PC Pro's main money making methods, who is famous for doing big giveaways in Wincroft. Elephilk Trunk, Altitude Shard and Elephilk Toenails are dropped by the Elephilk. The Elephilk spawns in the open most of the time, however it is capable of wandering into some caves, so it's worth checking quite far inside of these. Because the spawn area can be quite big, it might be worth to try to figure out the exact spawn nodes of it so that you can find the optimal spot to AFK in. But if you don't know them, you could just leave your account up here. It doesn't matter at what height you leave your AFK accounts, as chunks are loaded completely if they're in your render distance. So it can often be good placing accounts as high up as possible to keep them safe. To get Pride of the Heights and Draconic Bone Marrow, you need to kill Pyroclastic Hydras and Lava Spitting Limus. They do not directly drop the Pride of the Heights, but they do drop the unrefined Mysterious Metals, which you can trade at the Mike's Ingredient Shop for Pride of the Heights. You do need to have finished Dwarves and Dogans Part 4 to access this shop. The Pyroclastic Hydras spawn on the Molten Heights and Lava Spitting Limus spawn inside the same chunks on the bottom, most commonly around the road and by the Broken Altar. The best way to grind these mobs is to have one account AFK on top of the Molten Heights and if you have access to it, one class to kill the Pyroclastic Hydras that stays on top and a different class at the bottom to kill the Lava Spitting Limus. The downside of this is that you obviously need to get two sets of loot bonus gear. If you can't do this, you can also keep on going up and down. The max spawns for these seems to, according to my experience, be one each. Forming most rare mobs is quite similar to these, so let's go through a few more quickly and after that go into details such as world selecting, chunk reloading, rare mob spawn mechanics and more. To be able to grind any rare mob, you can search for the ingredient it drops on the Wingcroft website and it will show you a circle of where it can spawn. You can also find a list of all rare mobs on the Wingcroft wiki. Some more things you can grind is royal cake slices, which only require one account because of its almost instantaneous respawn rate. Cobble Scale Moth and Blades from Idol that drop Iridescent Elytra and more, where you should AFK on the Fountain of Youth in the Journal Jungle. The Nasakra mobs that drop Soul Stones. There are many that spawn and to grind them I recommend leaving your account on this tree. Corkers Rare mobs that drop Defective Circuit Incremental Mapping Module which shells for a ton and Golden Avia Feathers. It's good to leave your AFK account inside of the Corkers Lutron Tower. The T55 elusive cameras are the ones that drop the incremental mapping module. They rapidly cast charge and teleport spells as soon as they're within render distance in order to get as far away from you as possible. For this reason, once you spot the T55, immediately cast your spells, preferably before they finish their initial movement spells, as they can be very difficult to hit after that. To get obelisk cores and these other ingredients, you will want to AFK outside of the Lexdale prison. Leave your account high in these trees to keep it safe. Infermial Stalker that drop Lashing Hellfire and more can be grinded outside of Galleyboard. The oldest flower mobs that drop Death Whistle Leaves are a bit special because the mobs don't move so you need to find the exact spawn nodes and knowing the spawn order is also useful for this. These spawn nodes are often shared in the rare mob discord server, more about this later. And one last one is Dark Spirulina that drop Black Holes which spawns in the void at the Voidstone mining place. And there you have a bunch of rare mobs you could grind. To get help and more info, you can join the Rare Mob Hunters Discord. You can also leave a comment on this video or join my Discord to get help from me directly. Now, let's get into some spawning mechanics and some tips to best use this knowledge to earn the most. All mobs, including rare mobs, have a spawn and respawn chance that is rolled every second. The respawn chance for mobs is almost always lower than the spawn chance. For this, it is beneficial, but for some more than others, to do slash class to unlock the chunks and reloading them after each time you kill the mob, or just simply hopping to another world. Talking about worlds, what world should you actually pick to grind? You should pick out the world that is quite new. Why? Because newer worlds tend to be less laggy and therefore have more consistent spawns. So avoid old worlds or worlds experiencing heavy lag. If you also don't see a spawn after a long period of time, for example if the average spawn rate is 10 minutes and it has been 30 minutes with no spawn, it is recommended to slash class in order to unload the chunks in the event that the mob is hidden or stuck which can happen. If there are still no spawns after classing and another long period of time, someone else might be afk elsewhere in the world and easing up the specific rare mob limit. In this case you can always switch worlds if the problem persists. Rare mobs have a specific spawning order. 
Knowing the spawn order is useful as it allows grinders to cycle worlds more efficiently and will prevent one from walking in the opposite direction and unloading the chunk to mob us in if you're grinding with one account. Knowing the node order and location is especially useful when grinding mobs such as the Death Whistle Flowers or other mobs which are stationary and do not move at all. These exact spawn nodes change every time Windcraft releases a patch or update, as that shuffles a seed in the system which leads to new spawn nodes being chosen. But here it is important to keep in mind that the spawn nodes will be the same on every single world for some time when you play. But Windcraft isn't just about making as much emeralds as possible, it's also about experiencing the amazing story. So next check out this video where some of the best Windcraft story elements are edited together with some amazing voice acting from my Voices of Win mod that adds voice acting to NPCs.